I'm Jenny Herzog. I'm originally from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Now I split my time between Boston and Western Massachusetts, and I'm a jazz singer, tap dancer, and teacher. So what drew you to singing jazz and tap dancing? My dad plays jazz piano, so I grew up always hearing it. And I was trained more in musical theater and classical voice, but I was always gravitating more towards improvisation. Mm -hmm. I didn't like doing anything the same twice in a row. I always liked to do something different. So as the years went on, I went away from everything that wasn't improvisational. And so jazz and tap dance is what stuck. So when you're dancing, what's going through your head? Actually, that's one of the things I love most about tap is it gets me out out of my head. Mm. I spend a lot of time in my analytical mind, like ruminating and things like that. And when I start tapping, that stuff just sort of disappears. Mm. So it's sort of, it's like an escape or an oasis for me. So can you talk about your mission as an artist? My mission in all the different arts that I do is to bring high quality arts programming to people who might not otherwise have direct access. Mm. So that could be going into different nonprofits, organizations, communities, and basically offering something that wouldn't be there otherwise. My mom says that when I was a kid, one of the only places she could get me to go without a fuss was tap class. Making rhythms with my feet made sense to me in a way that not much else did. It felt impossible to be unhappy when I was tapping. But I was an anxious kid and that anxiety followed me all through my 20s with insomnia, restlessness, impulsivity, mood swings, and a series of bad relationships. Fall of 2020, I was 29, living in this big, lonely apartment in the suburbs of Boston. A typical day went like this. Wake up at 5 a.m., consumed by my restless leg syndrome. Compulsively exercise for an hour so that I'm not jumping out of my skin. I was still going to work as the art teacher at a therapeutic residential school, working with teenage girls with histories of trauma. So, great group of girls, but they would often ask me how I got this job because I was so wildly underqualified when I was gonna get a bra that actually fit, um, whether I was pregnant or sometimes they would threaten me or even throw a desk at me. By the end of the day, I couldn't go anywhere because it was COVID lockdown. So I went home, went to bed, woke up, did it again, day after day after day, after week after month. My life had become a slow drip of desperation. My mind was always either in the past or the future thinking, why did I do that? I'm so stupid. Am I ever gonna do the things I really wanna do? And time felt like this big sea of gray just spreading out into infinity before me. I needed something to change, but I didn't know what. And then a little voice in the back of my head said, tap dance. So I did a few shuffles right there in the living room. But my downstairs neighbor called up to complain and I couldn't dance there so, and I couldn't go to the studio because it was COVID. So I was determined and I sat down at my computer, wrote on Facebook, if I put some wooden boards outside, will anyone come and dance with me? Saturday morning, I drive to Home Depot, buy 10 two by two pieces of plywood, load them into my white Prius and make my way to the Cambridge Public Library lawn where I unload them six feet apart in a circle under a big willow tree. And then I wait. What am I doing? No one's gonna show up. I look like a total fool. But then my best friend came and my cousin and that random guy from three years ago and a few other people. So I put on my shoes, got on my board, turned on Ella Fitzgerald and started leading a warm up. Nothing epic happened during that class. I think some passerby stopped to do a few steps. Another person took a video. But what I do remember is by the end of the hour, that knot that's always in my chest right here loosened just a bit, and I felt a little less likely to explode. Then an older man who had been sitting on a bench nearby came over to me, and he said he'd been having a rough day, he went to the library to get a book, and when he heard Ella Fitzgerald's voice in the air with the sound of taps, it had cheered him up. 
Then he told me he was a retired journalist and asked if he could write a story about it. I was like, are you serious? Write a story about this? Sure. So then every Saturday from then on, I woke up with the familiar sense of dread, but I made my way to the Cambridge Public Library lawn to offer free tap classes to anyone, all backgrounds, all ages, all skill levels, and I called it Tap for Joy. Word began to spread, and after class, people would come up to me and say, this is the first face-to-face -face contact i have had with another person in days. I haven't left my apartment in ages. This is the most fun I've had in weeks. So we kept dancing. Even when it snowed, we put the boards out on top of the snow. But then it got too cold, so we had to go inside for the winter. Then I got a call. It was that guy, the journalist, and he said, you're never gonna believe this. The piece got accepted in the Boston Globe. I was like, what, are you serious? So I drove to the gas station, bought the paper, opened it up, and there was my face with the title, Teaching Joy. The irony was not lost on me because I was depressed. That winter, I quit my job, my boyfriend and I broke up, I got a grant to expand Tap for Joy to a school, after school program, senior center, and public housing site. I received bags and bags of donated tap shoes. A student bought me an amp with a wireless headset so I didn't have to scream, and I even got an email from NPR who wanted to cover Tap for Joy. This past Saturday, there I am. This time I've got 40 boards in a circle. I lace up my shoes, get on the board, and begin to dance. My mind, which is usually in the past or the future, comes to the present. I begin to punctuate time with my feet, my voice, and my body, and time is no longer an endless blanket of gray. I look to my left and see a grandmother and granddaughter dancing side by side. To my right, the two-year-old toddler who skips nap time to come and dance next to a group of elementary school students who I met when I went to their school, retired folks, college students, the man in the wheelchair who comes every week to watch, and everyone in between. We're all moving together to the same pulse. The sun's coming through the trees, the air is brisk. I catch someone's eyes and smile, and I dance.